Hello, everyone. Welcome to the RACC Virtual College Fair. We've got an exciting session today. Before we get started, a couple housekeeping items. Note, if you have questions, you can type them to our presenters at any time using the Q&A button. Also note that your micro and microphone and camera are off, so our panelists cannot see or hear you. Note as well, we've got additional sessions available on the StriveScan website, so if you have interest in another institution, go ahead and sign up at your earliest convenience. Be advised as well that this session is being recorded and will be posted out to the StriveScan website at strivescan.com slash RACC. With that, we'll turn it over to our first presenter from the University of Glasgow. All right, hello everyone. Uh, we all, you guys can all see in here. <clears throat> My name is Jay Shamlin. I'm with the University of Glasgow. I'm actually based in Chicago, Illinois, and Ashley Savagin is your admissions counselor, but I am taking over for her since she's on holiday. Um, I'm so excited to tell you guys about Glasgow. So without further ado, the University of Glasgow was founded in 1451. We are an ancient Scottish university, and we are one of the fourth oldest English-speaking universities in the entire world behind Oxford, Cambridge, and St. Andrews. We have about 33,000 students from over 140 different countries, and we're about half Scottish students and half international students. So I always ask students when they look abroad, first question I always say is, well, how American do you want to feel, right? We're only 2% U.S. Some schools have a bigger U.S. population. We're 14th in the U.K. We're 77th in the U.S. world rankings. We're the um, 29th most international university in the world. And to continue on, Scotland was voted the most beautiful country in the entire world in 2019. And what I love about Glasgow is that, you know, we're a city, but this is a Loch Lomond and a Loch is a lake, just so you all know. And this is going to be about 30 to 40 minutes outside of campus. And what I love is people think of Scotland as these picturesque views, these rolling hills, which is very true. Um, but then you really do have the city life. We were voted one of the best cities in the world in 2019, most affordable in the UK, fourth most, fourth most affordable in the UK for students. We are the largest city in Scotland at about 985,000 people. And Glasgow as a country is only 5 million people. So to give you guys an idea, it is a small country where there are more sheep than there are people, but you are going to be in the largest city, which is pretty sweet. Also, Glasgow stands for Deer Green Place, which means we have over nine different parks and gardens and uh, just nice places because people think of the city as not a place, a lot of places to get around to some greenery, and you'll find plenty of that in Glasgow. And we're a UNESCO city which, of music, which means pre-COVID, we would have about 150 live music events per week. Uh, it could be something as small as a string quartet or something as big as Kanye West is coming to perform at that green colored building, which is the Hydro, which is the second busiest venue in the world. But we're located in Glasgow's West End. The best way I can describe this is, you know, if you're in the LA area, it would be, um, you know, like going from Beverly Hills or West Hollywood down to downtown LA. Um, if you're from New York, it's starting from Brooklyn to Manhattan. Again, just like a neighborhood of a city. Um, what I love about the West End is the photo on the screen behind you. This is going to be um, Ashton Lane, which, as you can see, is a pedestrian-only street, and it's lined with restaurants, shop, uh, pub, pubs, and shops. Uh, there's a movie theater on this street, and it's 200 feet behind campus. It's a great area to grab a pint with your friend after class and just kind of just hang out in Scotland. Speaking of the university, here's a great aerial shot of the university, and the first building that pops out to you is going to be the main building designed by Sir George in the 1800s. In this building is our Adam Smith School for Business. Adam Smith, who is the founder of Modern Day Economics, went to Glasgow. We also have in this building our Colleges of Arts and, Science and Social Sciences, the Psychology, International Relations, Politics and Government. Big lecture halls in this building, professor's office. Basically, what I'm getting at is that you will eventually have class in here, even if your major is not in here. 13-story library, you all know what a library is, but on this library, in this library, on the 13th floor, we have special collections, which houses some, currently some of Shakespeare's manuscripts and some other great items for research purposes for students. But you all will spend a lot of time in the Fraser Building. The Fraser Building, is, think of it as like a student union. It's a one-stop shop. So on the fourth floor will be one of our dining hall options. On the third floor will be our Office of International Student Support and Visa Support and Study Abroad and Finance. So I say anything where you need a signature is going to be on this third floor. And the second floor, which is the ground floor in the UK, is going to be our doctor's office and our bookstore. Now, at Glasgow, the only thing that we do not offer is going to be anything under the performing or visual arts. We're going to go to dance, music. Um, well, we have music as music studies, but like singing, acting, dancing, all those things. You may want to look at what school that has a bigger arts scene. 
Um, but everything else besides that, we pretty much can have, we have for you. We have 500, 500 different program combinations. Um, our most popular program for U.S. students is going to be psychology, then international relations. And we're number one in the U.K. for veterinary medicine, dentistry, and nursing. In Scotland, we are a four-year degree. England, Wales, and Northern Ireland, there are three-year degrees. What's nice about the four-year degree is that, one, you're already used to it, and that's because the U.S. loosely based their education system off of Scotland. And also, we give you one additional area of study during your freshman year to kind of test the waters between. As you can see here, this is the physics major, and then they brought down physics and chemistry for year two, and then physics does years three and four. So it's not like a liberal arts school where you're doing two years of gen ed. Instead, you're taking more of the classes that you want to take. International requirements, we require a 1280 SAT or a 27 ACT, and then two AP exams or four or above in relevant fields because you apply to your major. So, for example, like the physics major would take AP physics, AP bio, AP chem, something along those lines. I'm hoping that the testing opens up for students in California this fall. I'm hoping it's not an issue, but we are test optional if you are not able to get that. We are looking for a 3.5 unweighted GPA with also honors level dual enrollment and AP coursework on your high school transfer to be considered for test optional. I will say most of STEM programs are not test optional, but most of our college of arts and social sciences are. And then finally, tuition starts at about $27,000 a year, not 25, I gotta update that. Um, it goes up accordingly uh, contingent on your major. Uh, we do offer, uh, we do accept FAFSA, so any federal loans you can get to leave the states, we will take. And then merit-based scholarships, we do offer one that's called the Undergraduate Excellence Scholarship. It is 5,000 pounds, which equates to about $6,200 U.S. That comes right off the tuition, and you will also be considered that automatically at the start. And then finally, there are three U.S.-based officers. Ashley Savage is your officer. My name is Jay. Here's my contact info. If you have any questions, feel free to take a photo of this or scan the QR code in the bottom right-hand corner and you'll be able to get on our mailing list. Thank you. We appreciate all the great information. We're on to our next institution, Goldsmiths University of London. Hello, everyone. Just got my screen share going. Um, here we are. All right, uh, my name is Will. I'm the International Officer at Goldsmiths University of London, and I'll be talking to you about our wonderful campus and university. I'm per uh, personally based in Brooklyn, New York, but as you might uh, gather from our name, we are based in the uh, metropolis of London. We are a top-tier public research institution and a member of the prestigious University of London. We were founded in 1891, and our campus is a medium-sized school of about 10,000 students, extremely diverse campus. Uh, about half our students are students of color. We have one of the largest LGBTQ plus populations in the UK. Uh, we also have a really sizable first-generation population and plenty of students from outside of the country. Uh, over a third of our students come from outside the UK. You also won't be alone. Americans are our second largest cohort on campus, and we have around 380 annually. Despite our medium size of 10,000 students, we do have a pretty small faculty student ratio, um, one to 14. And one thing to note as well is that we have Im implemented a Green New Deal on our campus uh, about two years ago, and we have committed to 90% carbon neutrality by 2025. We've banned beef on our campus, single-use plastics, we've installed solar panels all over our buildings, divested our endowment from fossil fuels, among many other initiatives on campus to meet that goal and tackle our climate crisis. So our campus is located just a short 10-minute train ride from the city center of London. London is, uh, you know, it really needs no introduction, but it is a huge city of about 10 million people. It's a huge magnet of immigration. So there's people from all over the world in London. Uh, on our campus, we have about 140 nationalities. Uh, our campus is a single site, so all of your courses are going to be held inside that orange line there. You'll notice we have residence halls both on and just off campus, and our train station at New Cross Gate is literally on top of our campus. It's really easy to commute around the city. There's buses that run all over that can get you around quite quickly if they're 24 seven. The train station, that, sorry, the train line that we are on is also 24 seven on Friday and Saturday nights. So it really gives you an opportunity to explore um, what the city has to offer. And on campus, you'll find that we have plenty to do as well in and around New Cross. We have a public movie theater, uh, we have a public museum, there's tons of art galleries, great restaurants, cafes, coffee shops, music venues. We even have a pub on our campus and a gym and tennis courts as well to stay active. 
And you'll see that we have really easy access to all of London. So our campus is in orange towards the bottom there uh, in Southeast Quadrant. It's really simple to get around. You can get over to Shoreditch in 15 minutes. It's a really fun area for students to hang out. And any of the major sites you might know, like the Tate Modern, British Museum, Buckingham Palace, I think that's where the Queen lives. Um, she, that's all within about 20, 25 minutes commute. We do have massive amounts of park space in London as well. The city is about 40% public green space. So while it is a really congested, you know, urban area, um, you can really find uh, uh, places to kind of think and escape. We have a huge park near our campus, actually. So our academics focus on the fine and performing arts, humanities, of which we're ranked in the top 100 schools in the world. Uh, we also do social sciences, business and management. Um, we're actually in the UK's top 20 for economics. And eight of our 18 subject areas are in the world's top 50. We also have eight subject areas in the UK's top 30. And we're number 21 in the UK for the quality and international significance of our research. Um, some academic programs that are really popular for students at Goldsmiths uh, coming from the US are our media communications program, which is top ranked. We have the largest media communications department in Europe. Um, that includes our screen school for film and television and journalism school. Also art and design is very highly ranked. We're number three in the UK for that um, and number 15 in the world. Every student gets their own studio space. Other common majors are theater, music, um, all of our management and business courses, international relations and politics, computer science and psychology. We also have a law school. So our application is on UCAS, the University and College Application Service. It's a direct application to a degree program. We are test optional and we do require a 3.0 unweighted GPA to apply. Um, the application closes each year for priority applications on 15th of January, but we do accept applications until 30th of June for most of our programs. And if you have any questions about UCAS, I'm happy to answer them uh, in the chat as well, in the Q&A. Uh, our tuition ranges from around 16,000 to 23,000 pounds. That roughly translates to around 20 to 27,000 US dollars, uh, depending on the exchange rate. So it's quite comparable to out of state public, perhaps uh, much cheaper than private options in the US. We do offer international scholarships and we do accept federal loans. So you can apply through FAFSA um, most schools in the UK do accept that. Um, you can also work during your time as, on a student visa in the UK, so that really can help offset costs. And for those perhaps looking to immigrate permanently to the UK, you can convert your student visa to a two-year stopgap visa, sort of, that will allow you to stay in the UK, perhaps gather a permanent work visa. It's a really simple conversion. Our accommodation is located um, you know, both on and off campus. We have eight halls and um, it's mixed gender housing. You can, um, we do guarantee housing for the first year and housing is suite style and you'll have your own room with your own bathroom. So that's a really great um, you know, opportunity to kind of get to know people in the suite. It's really easy to, to meet people that way. And with that, um, I'm gonna pass it off to the next school. So I'll pop some information in the chat for you. Thanks. Well, thank you so much. We're on to the representative from King's College. Hi, everyone. Uh, bear with me just a second while I get my screen shared here. All right, and away we go. Hi, again, my name is Ashley Monahan. I'm an international student recruitment manager for King's. I am based in the States, but as the name suggests, King's is located in London, England. On the slide here, we have um, the Strand Campus, which is one of our five campuses. Um, this is perhaps our most picturesque one. Um, it is located just north of the River Thames, and you can see where it falls in line with the rest of the city. Please note that QR code if you are interested in receiving some more information from King's, but I will also have that at the very end of the presentation. There we go, slide two. So Kings today, we still maintain our prestige almost um, 200 years later. We were founded in 1829 as one of the founding colleges of the University of London. And we are ranked today as number 31 in the world, number seven in the UK and number three in London, according to QS. 
And um, not just because of our rankings, but really because of the rigor that goes into a UK education. 93% um, of our graduates are in employment or are furthering their education just after graduation. I should also mention that we are a member of the Russell Group, which is sort of comparable to the Ivy League in the UK. I, I um, I guess, um, similar in terms of its, um, its status and the Russell Group is an association of 24 public research unis in the UK. So research is obviously a core value and at the heart of what we do. And I will talk about that a little bit more when I get to our academics section. But before that, let's talk about um, the campus community, student life at King. So we are a large urban campus. We have 33,000 students, half of whom are international representing 185 countries from around the globe. So very international, very diverse, multicultural campus community. We like to think it reflects the city of London itself. And if you are interested in a very large school in the heart of a capital city, Kings might be the place for you. Every year we have over 1,000 students joining us from the U.S. and now they are part of our campus community or our alumni community, which is 10,000 strong. But we also have a very active uh, students union on campus, our KCLSU. This is a way for you to get involved in over 300 activities, societies, academic associations, sports clubs, um, just a lot of ways that you can get involved, not just in the campus community, but also within um, London itself. We have a lot of civic engagement opportunities, volunteering um, ways to get involved, which is another, uh, I guess, core value or ethos that we uh, share at King's College London. But there we go. And let's talk about academics as promised. So we have nine faculties, 175 programs within those nine faculties. Our most competitive or popular programs are going to be our life sciences and medicine, business, um, law, but growing in popularity, especially amongst our um, US and North American students are programs within our arts and humanities faculty, within social science and public policy. So these are ways that we seek out US students to diversify the classroom. Um, and we are on UCAS, so similar to some other universities that you will hear tonight. We are only on UCAS, so you cannot apply directly to the university um, through a portal or anything like that. You have to go through UCAS at the undergraduate level. But our degree programs, um, again, a lot like other English universities here tonight, are three years in length, which can save you time and money. And we are one of the universities that also accepts the FAFSA. So something to keep in mind, um, you know, when thinking about if an international education is um, innately more expensive, I would say, not necessarily, do some research, see what options you have. And then something that definitely sets us apart is our London location. As I mentioned earlier, if you're interested in living in um, a huge city and really in the heart of it, then King's is probably an ideal place for you to study. We also have about a dozen residence halls. Um, we have private accommodations. We have a dedicated team for um, accommodation at King's that can help you if you're interested in intercollegiate halls with other University of London institutions. So many different options, um, regardless of what your comfortability level is. But we do guarantee first year housing for undergraduate students, and you are guaranteed a single room on campus most of the time with your own bathroom. Worth mentioning that London was voted most recently in 2019 as the best student city, and that is because of all of the resources that it offers to its student population, which is very unique to a city the size of London. Um, last but not least, I know I mentioned before that we have five campuses. Um, one of them was our Strand campus, which is just north of the city. The other um, three are along the River Thames, and then we have one that's three miles south. That's our Denmark Hill campus in South London. Still a very authentic London experience, just a different authentic London experience. And I think that's it for me. Again, please note the QR code if you would like Kings to send you some information, but I will also share my email and information in the chat so that we can keep in touch. But thank you very much. Thank you so much. We're on to IE University. Uh, 
All righty, sorry about that. Hey everybody, my name is Micah. I'm here to talk to you about IE University, which is located in Spain. I am currently located in California, um, in Los Angeles, and I also went to IE, so I'm happy to talk to anybody who wants to stay in touch after. Um, so yeah, let's get started here. So I always like to start with fun facts about Spain. Obviously, I won't go through all of them. Um, uh, I e or sorry, Spain is the second most visited country in the world, and also has the second most uh, spoken language in the world. Um, I e or Spain is also the world's largest largest producer of olive oil. Um, Madrid, which is the capital, also happens to be the sunniest city in all of Europe, and um, Spain also has some of the highest amounts of bars and largest clubs, um, like in Ibiza. And whatnot. So it's a great place, destination for vacations. There's lots of beaches, lots of culture, a little bit of everything. Um, so moving forward, so if you're someone who has a passion for travel, culture, or language, or you want an international experience, um, IE would be a good place and Spain would be a great location. Um, we're quite unique. One, we have two campuses in Spain. So we have our first campus in Segovia. It was built in 1218, so it's older than the U.S. It's in a rural setting, so if you like someone, if you're someone who wants to be in nature, mountains, rivers, all of that great stuff, that would be a great place to start. Our campus is also a World UNESCO site, so it's protected by the United Nations. So anybody who's inter interested in studying international relations will actually get to work on research projects with them. Um, we have a partnership with them, also working on the sustainable development goals. So if that's an interest, that would also be cool. Um, and our other campus is in the capital in Madrid. We have a new campus that we're building called the IE Tower. It's gonna to be the third largest and tallest building in the world and the first and only high rise in Europe. It's an urban city. There's something for everyone. If you like going out, um, sitting on terrazas, um, you know, different museums, all of that fun stuff. It's an easy place, all, all of it actually to, get around, whether it's walking, transportation um, in Spain is amazing. And it's also one of the safest countries. Um, so a little bit about IE, we are one of the most international diverse universities, especially in Spain. Over 75% of our students are coming from abroad with a makeup of over 140 nationalities. There's over 45 languages spoken on campus, but everything is taught in English. Um, we've got a smaller student faculty size ratio, and we are also known for our practical teaching methodologies. Um, IE is really known as a business school, so we have our own incubator on campus because we're known for entrepreneurship as well. Um, in fact, almost 8% of our students graduate with their own companies, they get mentors, they can do shadowing programs. Um, IE is also based off of technology and innovation, so we're offering a lot of VR, an AI into our classrooms and then a focus on humanities. Um, what's really interesting is IE is also ranked number one in Spain, seventh in Europe and 18th worldwide. Um, we put a huge emphasis on giving you as many opportunities to explore work and actually work with companies, whether that's on internships or research projects. Um, and you can also ask for a corporate mentor. These are gonna be a list of our single degrees, which are four years and our dual degree, which is five years. Um, the single degrees, the most popular ones will be law, um, business administration, um, international relations and computer science and artificial intelligence. And then our duals are all pretty popular. Um, this gives a little bit more flexibility in terms of what area you wanna go in our industry uh, moving forward. One thing I didn't mention is that our degrees are globally recognized, so you have a lot more mobility in terms of where you want to go after work. If you want to come back to the US, if you want to go work in London or wherever it may be, you can absolutely do so. Um, but like I mentioned, we put a huge emphasis on giving you as many opportunities to explore what you can do with your degree afterwards. So one way that we do that is through IE Labs. Those are on-campus internships, and those are offered your first and your second year. Um, these are just a small snapshot of a couple of them. So, you know, you could be a law student, but interested in a startup or interested in finance, whatever it may be, you can kind of mix and match. We also offer advanced seminars. So that could be something unrelated to your major that you want to add professionally to your resume. So if you're someone who's interested in Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, you can take a seminar on that. And then we have an honors program where you can actually network with CEOs. 
Um, so moving forward, the last couple years of your degree, you can actually do a paid internship abroad, um, go back to your home country, do a paid internship or an international exchange. So essentially study abroad while you're studying abroad. Um, we've got great partnerships with people world or different universities worldwide, including Brown, USC, King's College, actually, who's here. It's amazing. Um, but campus life, there's a lot of things to do. We've got over 100 clubs, um, a new thing spanning from yes theory to debate to dance, you name it, we have it. We are in a hybrid format. Most of our students are in person, but we've managed to have over 1,500 um, events, whether that's face-to-face -face or virtually. Um, but I'm happy to stay connected and talk to you a little bit more about our admissions process. We are on Common App or on our website. We do offer lots of financial aid, whether that's once you found out you've been in or even before. We have all kinds of housing and there is a QR code to book a call with me, stay in touch, I'm happy to do so. And thanks for listening. Thank you. We're on to our next institution, Macquarie University. Thanks everyone. Awesome. Thanks for joining. My name is Leanne Allen and I represent Macquarie University, which is in Sydney, Australia, and I am based in Los Angeles. Sydney is as a stunning city, as you can see here, um, and is home to 7 million people. Um, fun fact for you, if Australia is an incredibly diverse country and one in four Australians are actually born overseas. Macquarie is a large public university and we're located about 25 minutes from the downtown area of Sydney. So students have the best of both worlds, the big cosmopolitan city experience with the incredible beaches and if you saw one new beach in Australia every day it would take you 27 years to see them all um, and from the beaches you can retreat back to campus which is a really pretty parklands university. We have 40,000 students and of that there are 12,000 international students so an incredibly diverse student population as well. There are lots of ha things happening on campus. It's a very vibrant student lifestyle. We have over 120 different clubs and associations. Um, we also have sports available. Um, we don't have the NCAA outside of the US, um, but you can certainly choose a sport that you've always been doing or try something new. Um, we have the Australian University Games as well, which a lot of students say, say is the highlight of their degree. We are able to have two swimming pools on campus. Um, that main one you can see there is an outdoor pool because our weather does allow it. Um, if it's below 60 degrees in winter, we'll complain it's too cold. If it's above 90 degrees in summer, we'll complain it's too hot. So we do like a very mild temperate climate in Sydney, very similar to Southern California. Um, when you first arrive in Sydney for the very first time, we will pick you up from the airport and take you back to campus as well, um, where the, we'll have one full week of orientation, which we call O Week, where you really get to know the campus, um, what the lifestyle will be like and the city as well. That first picture there is our Mac Warrior, our mascot. We are named after the fifth governor of New South Wales, um, who was Scottish and hence why he's in our Scottish kilt. Um, we have a lot of different programs at the university. The biggest differences are similar to the UK in that our degrees are three years in duration. We don't have general education requirements. Students do need to know what they want to study at the time of application, um, but for students that aren't entirely sure what you want to do, I generally recommend that you do a double degree, a Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Science, for example. Um, our most popular programs are our international business and business administration. We're really strong in media and communications as well as criminology, um, counterterrorism and intelligence. We specialize in software and telecommunications engineering and fun fact for you, we actually invented Wi-Fi, so you're welcome. Um, and we have phenomenal earth and environmental science programs too. So if you're thinking about doing climate science or um, sustainability, Sydney and Macquarie is a fabulous place for that. Our flagship program is our Bachelor of Clinical Science, Doctor of Medicine degree, which is a six year degree program out of high school. So if you're thinking you might wanna be a doctor, Macquarie is a great place for that. And in your final year, you actually come back to the States and do a clinical rotation at Dartmouth College or Washington St. Louis, which are top 10 US ranked medical schools. Um, so great networking opportunity for when you do wanna return. 
Um, we do have on-campus accommodation at the university. This first th photo is brand new accommodation that opened in March. Um, generally speaking, you will have your own bedroom. You may have your own bathroom. Or you may share depending on what option you do choose. Staying on campus isn't compulsory um, and it's not guaranteed, but as long as you apply early, you won't have any problem getting a bed. Um, meal plans are available, but they are associated with the accommodation provider. So keep that in mind when you are looking where you want to stay, especially at Macquarie or any Australian university. So how much does it all cost? Our tuition is approximately $24,000 per year. Living costs are around $15,000 US per year and that's your flights, accommodation, insurance and all that fun stuff. So total cost of attendance is approximately $40,000 and when you keep in mind it is a three-year degree program and most students enter the workforce in that fourth year, um, it's a really great opportunity um, to save money getting an education. We are also one of 200 schools outside of the US where you can use US financial aid and we do have merit-based scholarships available too. On average students get about $10,000 towards their first year of study. You can also work while studying in Australia and minimum wage is about $19 an hour which is super helpful. It's free to apply to the university and the applications are done online direct through our website. It's a very much a merit-based, academic merit-based process. We don't require essays or recommendation letters and we are currently test optional due to COVID-19. So you just submit your passport if you've got one and your transcripts and we will assess your GPA. You can look online and know exactly what you need to achieve to gain entry into the university. So in theory, we should have 100% acceptance rate. So once you have your offer to the university, which you'll get within two weeks, you can apply for scholarships, your FAFSA loans um, and purchase overseas healthcare, then get your visa, book your flights and come to Australia. And I'll help you throughout that entire process as well. So it's not super daunting. Being in the Southern Hemisphere, our dates are a little bit different. So we commence in the February and the July of each year. Most of our US students do start in the July intake. It's about six to eight weeks from finishing high school. And we generally have everything for your application ready by April. So it's a pretty stress-free period. But if you do want to delay until February, that's no problem at all. We do have a small intake in November um, where some programs can start then, others don't. So you can certainly inquire into that at the time of application. That's it from me. Thank you so much for listening and hopefully see you all in Sydney. Thank you. We're on to our final institution, University of Roehampton. Hi, everyone. All right. Hopefully you guys can see that. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Haley Drogas. I'm the Regional Manager of North America for University of Roehampton, and we are London's campus university. So situated on a beautiful Parkland campus in Southwest London, the University of Roehampton has a very proud history dating back 180 years this year. And we are very close to central London, um, which I will get to that in just a few slides. And in 2019, we were ranked in the top 10 universities in London. So just a few facts and figures about Roehampton. We, of course, with us being in London and in the UK, have three year bachelor's degrees, which saves you time and money on your um, bachelor's degree with us. And we do accept FAFSA. We have great accommodations on campus, um, ranging from more high end and more affordable. So pretty much anything um, under the sun we have. And we um, like to say that we're the cheapest rent you will find in London and in a beautiful Parkland setting. And on campus, we have 141 nationalities. And of our 8,000 student population, approximately 10% are international students. That is not including EU students, though. So if you include students from the EU, then it's about 20% international students. And we have a great percentage rate of 93% of students finding work uh, within the first few months of graduating. And here is a map. If you scan that QR code, it'll take you to our fabulous virtual tour on our website. Um, but if you look at this map, we are the green building right down the River Thames and you can see the cluster of buildings together, the little Big Ben icon that is more like central London. So we're about a 15 minute um, train ride away on the underground or about between a 20 to 30 minute bus ride away from central London. 
And here is just a digital map to show you what our beautiful campus looks like. And three of our four historical colleges at the university are located in this area. Our Whitelands College is about a 10 to 15 minute walk off site from the rest of campus, um, but still just as beautiful. And we're right across the street from Royal Richmond Park. And 66% of the research done on our campus is a world-class standard. And in some of our departments, 100% of the research is considered world-class. So we're very proud of that. And we have seven academic departments, which are the School of Arts, Business School, Education, Humanities, Life Sciences, Psychology, and Social Sciences. And on this slide, you can see all of our program offerings from A through Zoology. And um, just to name a few very popular programs are our dance programs, which are the, um, some of the top dance programs in the UK. And a lot of students like to study English Lit and Creative Writing with us, um, as well as some more specific programs like our psych programs and um, some of our life sciences, like our specific nursing programs in adult nursing and mental health nursing. And just to quickly touch on, most of our programs have a placement within them or internship component. And even if they don't, with on your uh, student visa, you have the eligibility to be able to work or intern or volunteer on or off campus. So you can still gain that hands-on experience no matter what program you're in, if that's something you'd like to do. And we have a great career hub on campus where you can get assistance with finding work during school or after school and even get assistance as an alum. And in terms of how to apply, we are on the UCAS application, as well as have a free application on our website that I always tell students to utilize, and we do have rolling admissions. And in terms of entry requirements, we're typically looking at a, between a 2.8 to 3.0 US cumulative GPA equivalent. Um, that does vary program to program. And some of our programs like our life sciences and English creative writing do require extra requirements in order to gain admission. Um, we will be updating the SAT subject test requirement soon, um, but we alternatively, you can submit an AP exam. And then our dance programs do require either an in-person or a video audition. And in terms of tuition and fees, we are very affordable. And then if you also take into account that you're only studying with us for three years, again, it just makes it very affordable. You're saving a whole year of tuition already. And so roughly for undergraduate tuition, fees, cost, accommodation, everything, you're looking at an average of 35,424 US dollar equivalent. And as I said, we are on FAFSA, so you can utilize US federal loans if you'd like. And a lot of our US applicants do um, qualify for a merit-based scholarship, which saves them even more money. And we have some other really cool, unique scholarships, as you can see, like our eSports scholarships, uh, which is really um, new in terms of scholarship offerings in the UK. Again, like I said, for accommodation, we have many different options and they differ from um, first year students, continuing undergrad students, postgraduate students or older students. So even if you're a little bit older, you have a specific accommodation option from campus specifically um, for you as well. And it is all really affordable, as I said, and they are really cool. Some are really historical and some are um, more modern. And as you can see for student life, we have pretty much anything you can think of in terms of university offerings to get involved and have fun during your time with us and as well as competitive sports. And that is it for me. Last thing I'd like to say is if you scan that QR code, you can go to our Unibuddy page on our website and get in touch with current students. And my email is there as well to get in touch with me. Thank you so much. Thank you. We want to thank all of our presenters for the great content so far and the time we have left. We're going to ask each of our representatives to weigh in on the topic at hand, which is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? The representative from Glasgow is not with us, so we'll start with Goldsmiths, University of London. Please go ahead. Yeah, so, um, you know, I think this is your process. Um, obviously, everyone's going to have an opinion about where you might want to go to school, your parents, perhaps. Uh, maybe they have valid reasons because of finances. 
but this really is your choice. So, you know, kind of try to block off the noise. Don't listen to like where your friends are going. You'll make new friends. Uh, I promise you will. Um, so just kind of trust yourself and, and really figure out like where you the best fit into school. Thank you. King's College. I would say um, get in touch with current students as much as possible since travel probably is not and won't be for, I don't know, the summer maybe. Um, so speak to current students if you can. Speak to us. We're always happy to answer questions that you have, even if you think it's a silly question or a minor question. Um, but I just think that student experience piece is something that is going to be beneficial um, and that you can only get from current students. So take advantage virtually if you can. Thank you. IE University? Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, and to kind of bandwagon, you know, we are globally connected. Um, there are a lot of great resources out there. So I highly encourage everyone to look at colleges out of the country as well as where you're located. Um, and the biggest piece of advice, and it's definitely not mine, I'm stealing it from another rep, is maybe create an email or Gmail account for when you're applying to colleges so you have everything in one place and it's a bit more manageable for you. McCary University? We're obviously really biased because we work for international schools, um, but absolutely look overseas. Um, I've personally studied in five countries and once you do it once you'll never be out of stop. There's so many incredible opportunities out there and if the thought of a full degree horrifies you or is a bit scary um, make sure you do a semester or a summer or winter or any kind of overseas experience. Last but not least Roehampton. Um, I always just say do your research and don't be afraid to ask questions especially when it comes to to um, funding. There are so many scholarships out there that go unused um, and different funding options for you. Um, and even look into transferring if you need to. So in terms of affordability, you could always start at a smaller two-year school and then transfer because there's so many transfer student scholarships as well. So just do your research and don't be afraid to ask questions. Thank you. The time we have left, we'll go to our last question. Give a fun or interesting fact about your school, starting again at the top with Goldsmiths? Sure. Um, so Goldsmiths, I think one great thing about us is that we are really connected with the city of London. So we do put on uh, the London International Festival of Theatre with the city. Um, we also have our own music festival that's put on in conjunction with the city of London called Pure Gold. Um, it features a lot of our music students, uh, James Blake and KDB went to Goldsmiths. So you might see the next best thing, you never know. Um, so it's a really good way to kind of get to know the city and, and experience it. Up next, uh, King's College, sorry. That's okay, for King's, um, our mascot, Reggie the Lion, is um, based off of a toy that was gifted by King's students in 1926 to the then Princess Elizabeth, um, which was a toy lion. And we have him um, hiding all over campus. But um, yeah, Reggie the Lion, look it up. <laughs> IE University? Um, a fun fact that I actually just learned that a couple of weeks ago, ago is that uh, Bill Gates has an honorary business degree from IE. Um, because he never graduated from Harvard. McCary University? Um, being that it was uh, International Earth Day last week, um, it's worth mentioning that Macquarie has been um, ranked in the top 100 for um, sustainability of universities globally, which is pretty cool. And finally, University of Roehampton. Uh, we were one of the first universities in the UK to educate women, which is really cool. And then another, my personal favorite fact is that um, similar to in the Harry Potter book series, how all four uh, houses compete every academic year for a house cup, we do the same amongst our four colleges and call it the College Cup Challenge. Very good. All great information. And with that, we will conclude today's fair. We want to thank our presenters. Also thank our attendees for taking time to join us. We've got a quick four question survey so we can make these sessions better. And again, another plug to sign up for additional sessions as time permits. Note again, the session will be posted online at strivescan.com slash RACC. Thanks again and have a good night, everyone.